Okay, so hello people, or the half of my usual people that watch this nonsense. Uh, so to start off, thank you Steven, or I don't know, Stefan, if you prefer it that way, um, for buying me five coffees. Whenever you guys do that, it's very unexpected because I'm just some regular person on the internet saying random things and posting random underwear videos and not expecting people to really like respond but yeah <laughs> and then on top of that i met my first subscriber in real life which is very weird to me because i'm just a regular person and and it was like hey are you from youtube that reviews and he goes underwear <laughs> and then it's like yeah um that's me and i'm super weird and awkward and yeah uh, and i think if my stupid classmate didn't text me that morning all these like radiology questions even though I took that class like a year ago um, maybe that we wouldn't have crossed paths but life works in amazing ways the power of the internet and yeah um, and Steven your coffees since I'm on a diet um, it went to my UCLA parking permit and my emotional eating afterwards from all the stress of going to UCLA and having my recent interview, if you saw my most recent Instagram story, yeah. But that's beyond this video. Um, today I want to talk about dieting because occasionally I get a comment like this. For the most part, I'm fine with it. That's just the nature of the internet but I've come to like look at myself in the mirror and I'm like yeah maybe I can work on some stuff I've always researched like dieting and I didn't assume that I needed it because I was such a like thin person who weighed very light <laughs> and now I am 200 pounds and my waist is 37 inches so I want to work on that there's also a lot of like misinformation online where it's like oh if you lift weights then you continue to burn calories throughout the day which is true to an extent but it's not to the extent that you would expect so i had a problem realizing that i'm overeating nowadays that's part of the aging problem since i'm not in my 20s anymore so if i rewind back a couple months I finished my second degree in veterinary technology and I had the time to focus on my fitness again since I didn't have to like study intensely on the cardio bike while reading lecture notes whenever I could. So I was doing cardio like more focused than I usually do because when I would read lecture notes it's more like that's the primary focus and doing cardio is just part of staying awake and re being able to read without like dozing off because I have that problem and then um, now it's like I can read comics and really pedal hard since comic books aren't that long in dialogue so I have been being like oh I should be able to like shed some fat because cardio is like the more calorie burning exercises but yeah I was like uh, I think I need to work on something so so with school aside and me not having to like cut things short skip ab workouts because I don't have to like rush to my internship anymore and things like that I also like had my girl cousin say like why does your stomach stick out so much and my mom being like I swear you're getting bigger but you're stomach's also getting bigger and I'm like Ugh, how dare you I know myself and all that stuff but at the same time in the back of my head I'm like yeah that's true and I know like a lot of you guys in the comments are like very supportive and really body positive but at the same time I know that I'm not at my like full potential so that's when I really like start to dial in and be like I'm gonna be motivated to fix my nutrition and just see if I can 
maybe like hit 180 and hopefully shed like 10% of body fat if that's possible. But it's only like week two right now, so I don't really see a difference. I actually recorded myself like weighing myself, so I don't know how much the clothes weigh, but. And on top of that, I one day I was like changing in the gym locker room and I saw like this one dude I see a lot, but he always wears a t-shirt and I never really see him like with the shirt off. And then he was like changing that day and I was like, whoa. His like chest was like those Hawaiian buttons and like hit my head over with a brick and just like do like necrophiliac stuff to me already. So with the story aside, how I constructed my diet is based on like a lot of research. So I am very sciencey in my research because I am a science nerd and all that. What I wanted to do was know that that's something that's proven to work. Like how if you think CrossFit might be the better version of an exercise for you opposed to like traditional weightlifting, it's like, well, CrossFit is very intense. It shows results. But traditionally, like traditional weightlifting has always proven to work and that's why it's still a thing. And then all these like fad workouts always appear and disappear. So I decided to do macronutrient counting uh, opposed to things like going vegan and uh, trying to go into ketosis and, and piss on a stick to see if there's ketones coming out and yeah. So macro counting is also known as flexible dieting and I think it's one of the last sort of diets people choose because there's lots of math involved and when you can just like do a high fat low carb diet that's more easier just because you're just knowing what to really eat but that's more difficult for me because I really need to track all my calories to know that I'm not overeating because I don't want to be any more heavier than I already am. I'm just making this random video to explain it but I don't know. I can be here back two months later and I'm not any heavier or lighter or physically any different so yeah. So I referred to a women's health article just to really know how to start it and then Basically, there's this infographic that tells you to calculate your basal metabolic rate. And then that's your daily energy output to basically have normal body function. And then you're going to factor in your activity level, which mine is basically very high because I work out a lot. So that's the thing. You cannot out exercise your your diet or your nutrition and just to note even though my demographic is like 90% male uh, the formula to determine your basal metabolic rate is different for men and women so after you determine your daily caloric needs then you're gonna factor them out into the perfect like ratio for you to lose weight and basically lose body fat and you're aiming for a high protein low carbohydrate ratio but I found that really hard to maintain so if you look at studies the ratios are all different and then people are basically all different because if you look at like how dogs are all the same species but there's different breeds and you're not going to expect a greyhound's metabolism in a English bulldog. So once you find your perfect ratio that you can keep, just make sure you're in a cal caloric caloric deficit so that when you, over time, keep hitting that deficit, then your body's gonna use your fat stores to balance out the caloric needs and then you'll see, you'll see your body start to lose weight because all those stored calories all this is gonna be used to balance out your daily needs until you can finally like maintain a weight so with that aside then you're gonna learn how like calories are different from your macronutrients because calories is not treated the same as 
your protein, your carbohydrates, and your fats or lipids, which is your macronutrients. And your micronutrients being your minerals and vitamins. After calculating everything, then you're probably going to want to look for a food scale if you don't already have one. Which is one of the things I didn't want to do because I knew that counting macros is very tedious in that way. But it's like a necessary thing for me since I really need to know that I'm hitting a deficit now. So I, I can hit that 180 pounds. And for the most part, having a food diary isn't that hard because if you use MyFitnessPal, which I think is probably the best app out there, and I don't think any other app can beat it. The only hard thing there is is the um, looking for food that you don't know the name of, and then if that food has like bones in it, then you have to like know the density of the bone to meat ratio to try to subtract it or tear off the bone off the meat before you weigh it and that's very tedious for me anyways because I'm not using like straight up tilapia steaks and stuff like that so yeah but yeah using the my fitness pal it's very convenient because there's like a barcode scanner and even like things you don't expect to show nutritional facts in it it shows like Weichuan lotus buttons I'm like whoa and yeah it's also very cool when I'm at work and I eat like a string cheese and there's like the barcode already on it and I can just scan it. But yeah, when you come to think of it, it's like, for thank God for internet because I wouldn't be carrying a book and using a calculator all the time. So if you're curious about what ratio I'm using, I am trying to just keep my carbs at 50% and then protein would be the next and then fat would be the last because a gram of fat has more calories than both protein and carbohydrates the carbohydrates is basically the first to be used to provide you energy throughout the day and protein is more flexible so I'm just very carb dependent so I wanted to hit more of a one that had more of a successful research study which meant that like 50% carbs is okay for now anyways because so, I'm pretty high in body fat so yeah so I guess in the end if you're still like watching <laughs> I learned that I didn't realize that I've been overeating for so long probably so I'm considering this like a four year bulk just to like make it sound nicer but yeah it's time for me to shed off the fat and show like the chisel marble statue that I am. But yeah, so a calorie surplus basically means growth and then a calorie deficit means weight loss. Also carbs and protein and fats behave differently. That's just a product of evolution. So carbs get used first, then protein, then fats. I also didn't realize that I have been eating way more carbs than I thought. And then if you measure out four ounces of rice into a bowl that's already like 300 calories also going back into that ratio where i took from a bodybuilder that was like 50 percent protein for me that's not realistic because if you take my caloric needs and factor in 50 percent into the amount needed that would equate to like 400 grams of protein which is crazy and if you like read from what other bodybuilders like say is a right amount of protein is basically a gram per pound you weigh so i technically only really need like 160 180. i don't think i've ever hit that though so for now my priority is to just hit a calorie deficit while making sure that even though i'm counting my macronutrients to make sure that my micronutrients are accounted for, which is basically through my morning shake. And then the rest of it is hoping that all the fresh foods I eat will make up for the like 50%, other 50% of the daily needs of vitamin A, vitamin C. From what I read, a thousand calorie deficit is okay, but people normally aim for like 500 to 800. And yeah. If I go over that 50% carb 
carbohydrate I'm not taking it too hard on myself that's just one of the things you naturally do when you're like on a diet and you're like damn it I broke it so yeah I broke it already when I had that one like big cheat day cheat day um, and I ate like a lot so I feel like I bounced back but who knows we'll see in uh, maybe three more weeks or so technically by the fourth week of March I should be seven pounds lighter but I don't know about that because I, I'm still 200 and it's been like 10 days so I guess to end thank god for diet soda because I can't really like drink a Thai tea or two two to three times a week anymore for a while and I'm still eating carbs it's just for the most part I eat it I eat my limit between breakfast and lunch so my dinners are always very low carb and it's like sad but not sad at the same time because proteins digest really slow so by the time I'm in bed I'm not even hungry still and I'm already asleep by then also having fat in your body is a good thing it's necessary for the fat soluble vitamins which is ADEK I think and then the water soluble ones being B and C if I remember from animal nutrition correctly and vitamin toxicity is a thing so don't overdo it also if you're on a like health journey with me don't lose your weight too quickly because saggy skin is not the most attractive thing and it's most likely gonna be needed to be surgically removed and you can't like cocoa butter it back but yeah this is much better than pissing on a stick and seeing if there's ketones in your being released in your body uh